Hey, what is going on everybody, and welcome to Fantasia. For today, we're actually going to be jumping into another session of Guild Wars. So, we just had a pretty big update um, happen, I think, a, a day ago. So today, as you can see, there's going to be a little bit of visual changes to the Guild War tab. Um, you're going to see the UI is a little bit different. We have a little um, bottom right corner, we have a little uh, instructions from our uh, guild leaders and admins there. So that's pretty cool. Now, unfortunately, my tower, this is being recorded pretty late actually, it's about like 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. Um, so a majority of the people on the other team has have already attacked, and so they're already taking down this entire area. Now unfortunately, due to the update, um, a lot of the, as you can see, the dates are a little bit scrambled. So like 5 hours ago, 4 days ago, 6 days ago, and all that stuff. Um, I believe my defense team had 2 draws, and then I had uh, 1... Um, defense failure. So overall is not too bad. Um, it took three people to take down my tower, which is pretty decent. And we're holding on even though, as you can see, the havoc on the left side, that little bar, we're getting absolutely destroyed by the other team. Alright, so anyway, we're gonna go ahead and fight against this area here. I want to try and take down both of these uh, mini towers. Now this guild is a pretty strong guild, so if I if I lose here, it's uh, it's going to be quite unfortunate, but that's going to be expected. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and attack into this tower first. It's called Last uh, Stifler. So against Last Stifler, um, the first team I'm going to bring in is uh, this is a pretty risky team. Um, I have a bit of information about the uh, opponents from my uh, guildmates, which is pretty good. The Assassin is going to be faster than all of my units here, which is completely fine. The Charles and the Bologna are going to be the targets I want to take down fast. Now Helga is going to be here to provide fairly simple defense breaks and things like that. Um, she also has pretty good bulk to survive hits overall, and Ken, as you know, is a really strong bruiser. His only real threat is Seaside Bologna, but hopefully Helga can take her out uh, pretty fast. The Assassin's is not going to be a huge issue here, um, and Mont Morrissey's there for the cleanses if I need it. For the second team, I'm bringing in uh, Moonlight Ken as my main DPS. Now this is kind of risky. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because he has two AoE damage dealers on his team. He has a Tenebria and a Vildred. His Ruzid is really, really fast. I think my guildmate said it's over uh, 241 speed. So I don't really have anyone to match that unless I stack Helga with uh, Falcon or Clurry for the speed imprint. So unfortunately, I'm not able to do anything there to outspeed that Ruzid. So I'm just going to go ahead and take his hits full on... Um, uh, in terms of the Vildred and the Tenebria. Apparently they hit hard, but hopefully my Crimson Armor can cut in and put the invincibility on my Ken uh, so that I don't have to risk dying. But we'll see. It's pretty risky, but all of the remaining buildings are pretty risky fights overall. So we're going to see how it turns out. Alright, uh, this Sid actually hits quite hard and uh, went for Helga, so that is unfortunate. We're going to go ahead and S2 here to cleanse and just heal up to full. Uh, oh, and if you noticed, uh, I turned on Japanese voices, that finally became a thing uh, in Epic 7, so that is really much appreciated. Um, I am... <laughs> I love listening to these Japanese voice actors, they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, there, there are some glitches, so like, if um, a character does not have a Japanese voice attached to them already, you're going to hear them in English, uh, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. Um, and then we also have, uh, ooh, what am I going to do? I'm going to buff the team. And then, um, yeah, see, Helga there has the English voice. Um, but the other thing is that, uh, I believe the Japanese voices are much quieter compared to the, um, the English voices. Oh my god, really? I got sacked by that Charles, uh, dual attacking there. Okay. That's really, really dumb, but jeez. Alright, we might we might lose this. Oh my god. Uh, that's not good. Okay, Assassin Sid's gonna kill Helga. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't think Yep, that's that's it. <laughs> We're not surviving that. Wow, that uh that Charles sacked my Mont Morrissey with that dual attack. Okay, lucky dual attack into an S2 follow-up as well. That is very unfortunate. Okay, so here, um, hopefully Tenebria does not run any strip on her. Okay, so she's uh, gonna force the counterattack out on my Moonlight Ken, which is very nice. Hopefully Arbiter Vildred does not kill anyone here. He shouldn't. Okay, very, very nice. 
hear Crimson Army just screaming in the background. Okay, Arbiter, or uh, sorry, not Arbiter Vildred, regular Vildred goes down for the count. Very, very nice. At least we're gonna get the draw here. That's that's good. Um, I think I only needed a draw to take down this tower, so that's that's a good thing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, heal everyone up. Yeah, so, wow, that first that first game, that was really, really bad. Um, that was a big yikes. Okay, good. Moonlight Ken gonna easily take down the Tenebria right there. Um, I usually only bring Moonlight Ken against uh, teams that utilize AoEs. So, Vildred and Tenebria, in this case, trying to cleave. Um, but, yeah. Counterattack there. Very, very nice. Gonna easily take down the Ruzid. And, yeah, there we go. Um... So I surrendered that first game before my Ken vanished. As you can see, he was kind of like stunned or whatever, holding his head. Um, and because I did that, it means I could, I basically saved him, I preserved him, so I can use him in future battles in the Guild War. Unfortunately, Helga and Montmorency, not going to be able to use them anymore because they actually uh, died in the battle. Um... So we went ahead, okay, we took down that tower over here. I'm going to find another opponent to fight, and we will be right back. All right, guys, and welcome back to the second battle. So I'm going up against God Rasista. Ras um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Now we're going to go in and see what he has here on his defense team. I've already set up my offense to counter his, um, or hopefully counter. So in the first team, he has Lilius, Charles, and uh, Vildred. So... As we saw from last time, uh, Moonlight Ken is really good against AoE team, so I'm going to bring my Moonlight Ken up in the first battle here. I'm bringing Vanilla Ken as well because he has two Earth units, and Ken has pretty decent DPS uh, and um, can out-sustain both of those, especially since he has no healer. I'm bringing in Angelica as my healer so that she can attract the attacks of Vildred and uh, Charles. Um, she's tanky enough that she should be able to withstand them unless Charles completely sacks her like he did with my Mount Morrissey in that last battle. Um, the second team here in the defense team, we see a Dian, a Seaside Bologna, and a Moonlight Zerato. Um, that's not really too big of a threat, the Moonlight Zerato. Uh, the only thing I'm really looking out for is the Seaside Bologna, so I brought in Charles as my main DPS, because Dian typically doesn't really have a too great of um, burst healing potential. She has pretty decent, like, sustaining over time-ish, depending on what artifact she's running, um, but Charles should be pretty good against this. I have Crimson Armin to soak up the damage and to help mitigate some of uh, Zerato's attacks. If Zerato is on a uh, violin so he can strip buffs, um, then Crimson Armin's immunity um, will hopefully help prevent a little bit of that. Um, and I also have Acadius as my healer to attract some of the damage from Seaside Bologna. And of course, I can always put Invincibility on my Acadies using her own S2, so that redirects Seaside Bologna's attacks to Crimson Armin in times of need. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump right into this, and let's see how it goes. So this first battle, I'm expecting my opponents to be, yeah, much faster than me. Um, he's going to go ahead and try to push my team back. Hopefully he misses on my Angelica. Of course not, and he gets a crit in. Um, Moonlight Ken's gonna go ahead and counterattack. Not too bad. Uh, Charles is gonna give the Vildred the attack buff here, though, and that's the problem. Um, hopefully. Oh, good. Sigurd Scythe was activated, so my Moonlight Ken's gonna heal up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna put up the barrier and the heal, um, up on my Ken's, I guess I could say, uh, before this Vildred goes in for the attack. Now, hopefully, he's gonna be critting. Yes, he's critting my Moonlight Ken, which is fantastic. This triggers the counterattack. And I'm able to take him out in one hit. Fantastic. All right. This made it so much easier. Okay, so my regular Ken is going to go ahead and attack the Charles. I'm bringing him down fairly low. Um, and now what I'm going to do here is hopefully defense break with my S3. There we go. We got the defense break on the Charles, which is pretty good. I'm going to apply some heals to my uh, Moonlight Ken. And this should be able to finish off the Charles. The defense break, yeah, the defense break is definitely very, very nice there. Okay, so now at this point, um, we just have to DPS down a single Lilius, and we should be good. She's taking quite a bit of damage, um, although she is pretty bulky. Yeah, she's about 20k HP. Okay, gonna heal up my Ken right here, and Lilius hopefully triggers the counterattack from my Moonlight Ken. There we go, he- uh, perfect. Crit on the Moonlight Ken, triggers the counterattack, and there we go. All right, first battle, coming in clutch, uh, this Moonlight Ken. Very nice. 
Okay, so my Crimson Armin's actually faster than all of his units, uh, even his DN, which is interesting. I'm gonna put up the S3 for the immunity on everybody, uh, which is gonna be very useful. Now, Dian's gonna be buffing his team with the anti-crit buff and a attack buff here. What I'm gonna do with Charles is I'm gonna go straight for the S3. Um, after my Akades. Akades should be fine without a uh, an invincibility buff on herself. I don't want to direct all the uh, damage onto Charles, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I'll smack the Seaside Bologna for a little bit of chip damage, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use my S3 on Charles. Alright, so since Charles' invincibility will be gone after this turn, it's important that he gets the defense buff here. Um, he gives the attack buff to everyone else as well, which is pretty good. Alright, Seaside Bologna hits quite hard, but my Elber's Ritual Sword is procking. Charles goes for the S1 and S2, no crit on the S2, thanks to... Oh, that would have killed too if it was a crit. Um, but thanks to Dian's buff, um, I missed the crit on that. Moonlight Zerato coming in, I'm not too worried about his damage potential, he's usually quite weak. Alright, Dian's gonna come in with a barrier on his team, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and poke Seaside Bologna here. Got the Provoke on her, which is pretty nice. I'm gonna Soul Burn the heal because my Charles is quite low from the uh, from the Seaside Bologna. Unfortunately, Charles' S2 did not crit um, against that Seaside Bologna. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and S1 into the S2. Perfect. Very, very nice. That's what should have happened earlier, but RNG, of course, always works against me. Alright. Uh, Zerato's running Violin, which means he's stripping a lot of my buffs. As you can tell, my buffs are just getting uh, zeroed out one by one uh, because of Zerato here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly finish off this DN so I can focus down the Zerato. There we go. S1 into S2. Very, very nice. I want to get rid of the DN first because her, um, her anti-crit buff is very problematic. Alright, so, very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and S3 here. My Akades is on, um, Wonder's Potion Vial, so she went ahead and cleansed her own Provoke debuff on her, which is really, really nice. Um, that allows me to basically, um, anytime she's provoked or, um, stunned or sleeped, she can, she has a chance of, um, removing it from herself. Um, my... So my Potion Vial is at 100%, which means, like, no matter what, it's gonna cleanse a debuff every turn. Um, as you can see, it worked right there. Uh, the only thing is that if there's more than one debuff, so you saw Crimson Armin and Charles was provoked, it's only going to remove one of the debuffs. Um, that's the really, that's really the only downside it has, is that it can remove one. But if I get lucky and there's multiple debuffs and Akedis cleanses herself, then she can go ahead and cleanse the entire team with her S3. So, alright, there we go, we finished off the ML Zerato. Again, he's very squishy, quite expected that, uh... He will go down fairly quick. Alright, so that does it for the second battle. We're gonna come back with the third one in just a second. Alright guys, welcome back to the third and final battle of this guild war. We're gonna go up against Dan Riz. So, um, during this time, I think a couple of my guildmates tried attacking him and it brought him down just a little bit. So all I really need to do to take down his tower is to get a draw. Now hopefully I will end up getting a win, but we'll have to see about that. So what we're going to be doing here is, as you can see on the top team, I'm bringing in the double Ken duo again. Um, this is going to be pretty interesting to see how that goes. Now, the uh, Biken on the other team is going to be attacking my Angelica here. Um, I don't really have another healer that I can use, unfortunately. I would love to be able to use a Kades in the top. Um, that way, it would redirect the attacks of the Biken to my Moonlight Ken. Um, but as of right now, I just don't think that that's going to be possible. Um, unless his Arbor of Vildred is really, really kind of like slow and pathetic, in which case I can just bring my Melissa instead. I don't think that's going to be how it goes. Um, yeah, it's going to be a bit risky. Um, you know what? You know what? I think risk is how we're supposed to do this, right? So let's go for this. Okay, the second team is very safe. I'm going to bring in the Dizzy against the Charles, Seaside, Bologna, and, um... Fallen Cecilia, so I might have to speed up that footage if it takes very long, but in the top game, you know what I'm gonna do? Yeah, that's right, I'm gonna bring in Melissa, Moonlight Ken, and Ken, and we're gonna see if we can if we can do this. Now, I'm pretty sure we can't, that Arbor Vildra is probably going to destroy us, but you know what? 
let's just have some fun with this. I've been meaning to test out Melissa. Now let's watch her get absolutely destroyed uh, by this um, Vildred. All right, so we're going to go into this. Um, I don't even think Melissa has an artifact, you know? That's kind of a, an oversight on my part. But hey, that's all right. Um, Biken's going to go ahead and attack uh, into Ken twice. Going to crit on the second hit as well, which means she's going to die uh, with the counterattack from Moonlight Ken. There we go. Now, this is going to be unfortunate here because Moonlight Ken did not get taken down to below 50% health. Um, Ooh, please. Oh, Melissa did not. Did not survive. Oh, well. That's kind of to be expected. It's still quite unfortunate. Um, Ken's gonna miss this, but hopefully still... Can oh, does not kill Biken. Hey, that's not that's not fair. All right, but Moonlight Ken's gonna go ahead and just heal himself back up. There we go. That's very nice. Um, here's the problem here. I'm gonna go ahead and S3. So we don't really have too much to stand on this team. Uh, Moonlight Ken can sustain himself a little bit, but that's quite unfortunate that Melissa died. She was a little too squishy. Um, oh, whoa, whoa! <laughs> um, okay there. Hi. Uh, Vildred revived. He's gonna die. Oh, Jesus. Uh, oh my god, he revived with a greater attack buff. Rest in peace. Well, there goes my team. Ken's still alive, but not for long. Um, wow, that's unfortunate. <laughs> uh, I should not have brought Melissa, but oh well. It was all in good fun. Alright, so now all we have to do is get a draw on this uh, by winning the second battle. Watch me int. Watch me int this. Went for, went for the fun, maybe too prematurely. Alright, so both of his uh, FCC and CC Bologna have immunity, so that's going to be a bit of a problem. It's okay. We're going to go ahead and S1 there. Uh, ooh, this is bad. So he's uh, counterattacking with the Alper's proc, that's okay. We're still in decent HP standing on our Dizzy. Uh, I built her a little bit more tanky than I usually do during the free unequip change, so that's alright. We're gonna go ahead and Crimson Arm in here. I'm gonna put up the immunity buff, alright. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heal up with the S3. There we go, Cisa Bologna is gonna go only Akades is going to get hit here, so that's fine. Alright, very good. Alright, so now at this point, um, everyone's immunity buffs have been uh, used up, so now I'm going to go ahead and S3 with the Dizzy, and we should be able to stack a bunch of debuffs on everyone, and just slowly chip them down from there. You guys know how this goes. Alright. So, um, Cease Apollona's gonna counter here, not, not too bad overall. I'm gonna go ahead and try to redirect Charles's attack onto, um, my Crimson Armin. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and S2 on the Akades right here, heal her up a little bit, and put the invincibility up. Cease Apollona's gonna go ahead and attack, um, Crimson Armin as well. There we go. Charles did not get hit by that, I don't think. Wow, Charles! Hitting two crits, not even missing anything? Okay. Alright, Charles. We're gonna get wrecked by RNG here. Defense break on my, um, Dizzy as well. That's not good. I'm gonna go ahead and try to provoke. Good. The Seaside Bologna. Gonna soul burn and heal everybody up here. Alright, very nice. Um, alright, please stun somebody. Alright, nice, we stunned F. Cecilia. Charles still landing the crits, even though he's blinded. Okay. Alright, he got two misses there, which is good. Okay, this is this is what we're looking for. Crimson Armin taking taking the taking the heat for the for the team. Okay, gonna provoke the Charles again just so he doesn't completely obliterate my dizzy. C Set Bologna gonna attack us there, that's fine. We're gonna do the S2 here. Cecilia's gonna come out of her stun. That's fine. Uh, Dizzy still has an S1. Please stun the Cisab Bologna. Nope. And we double proc Elbrus. Interesting. At least they're missing this time around. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and provoke the Cisab Bologna. Nope, no provoke there. That's alright. Still hit, uh, still hit my Crimson Arm in any way. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and S3 here. No soul burns necessary. Just gonna top everybody off. There we go. All right, and Dizzy's S3 should be back up. Very, very good. We can reapply the debuffs to the team. 
And I might just have to fast forward this. We'll see. Alright guys, so um, <laughs> hopefully that little fast forward thing helped uh, to ease the pain a little bit of watching this extremely long fight. So we're back here and um, his uh, units are fairly low. Uh, thankfully RNG has been uh, kinder to me in this battle than in the previous ones that we were, we were in. Um, Charles is not um, critting every single hit. There we go, Seaside Bologna goes down, Charles should follow swiftly after, and now we only have this Moonlight Cecilia and there's no way for him to win. Alright, so we're just gonna quickly DPS him down here. Uh, the Moonlight Cecilia is only going to be targeting my Crimson Armin anyway, and even if there's a Provoke, then it doesn't really matter because there's only one target to, uh, to attack anyway. Alright, gonna go ahead, hopefully, crit? Nope, no crit. My Crimson Armin has a really low crit rate. Alright, come on guys, you can break the barrier and finish them off. Let's soul burn this with the Dizzy, and this should be it. Um, after this S3, the S2 should kill, if not Crimson Armor will finish the job. Alright, gonna go for the S2, push Cecilia back just a little bit, there we go, very nice. And Crimson Armin. Very good, finishing things off with a crit, and yeah. So we, we got the draw in the end, which is really all that matter matters, um, I don't really care for the Havoc or anything like that. Uh, we took down the, um... We took down that last tower, which opens up this one right here. I cannot fight this fort uh, because I have used all of my guild crests, and so that's all right. Uh, oh, and just a clarification: when I say I don't really care about the havoc, um, there's either way I was only going to get 70 havoc from that anyway, because there's only a sliver of his uh, HP on the tower left. So it didn't matter if I got a draw or a full success win; it's still going to contribute the same amount to my overall guild in terms of the score as you see on the left side. Um, the only thing that matters is uh, I get a little bit less rewards at the very end because I got two draws and one win this time around, rather than just uh, like all wins. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, hopefully that clarified <laughs> things up so you, you're, you're not just like, wow, look look at Azalea just throwing his uh, his entire guild under the bus for some memes. Alright, anyway, there we go guys. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe for more Epic 7 content, and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.